everyone and welcome to beautiful paradise of Bharat, India. My name is Agnes and today I wanted to share with you my first year experience of living here in India because just a few days ago we've hit first anniversary of our stay in India. So like I've mentioned one year ago my family and I which is our three children and my husband have shifted the whole life here into India and we are currently living in Indore which is in Madhya Pradesh the cleanest city of India and what a year it's been I have so many amazing stories I have so many amazing experiences but I wanted to share with you everything that's happened so far this year what we're doing our impressions where have we been where we're still planning to go and what are our future plans for our family life here in India and how long we're going to end up staying here so if you're excited to hear more stay tuned and don't forget if you're enjoying the content that you're seeing to press the little like button and also subscribe to my channel for more content like that. First of all, I wanted to tell you my first impression on the life in India and the initial struggles that we had. Now, for the first three, four months, it was really, really challenging for us. We didn't know anything about the system here, where to shop, you know, how to organize yourself, commuting and everything and people and it was just really challenging and it seemed like although everyone was helpful there was a lot of contradicting information coming through so it was really challenging and you know our kids it's not just me and my husband that moved the country it was our children as well so they have struggled to adjust to the new, new routine they struggled to see how much studies they have to go through although they are in excellent schools there is also tuitions after school and also there is a lot of other extracurriculum activities that they have to go through so it really was not easy for them at the beginning but every time they had time off school we jumped on the plane and we took a flight to some another destination to discover beautiful India which is what we did for the last year because we have a family in Delhi Punjab and Kolkata this is where we have definitely wanted to visit and we have stayed there for a few weeks we've also been to Darjeeling in West Bengal we've seen Gangtok we've been to Goa trip and also we flew back to England and Poland just for December for Christmas to visit my family because we really really miss them and especially my children really missed my parents so that's what we did over the Christmas December last year one of the major things that's changed for us is the weather and the food obviously in India although we used to eating Indian food here especially in Indore the food is very spicy so the level of spiciness is much higher to what we can tolerate so my children had decided not to eat the food here at all and whenever we're going out they tend to go for a non-Indian option so therefore I actually end up cooking for them and it is what it is it's just one of those things that because now I'm not working full-time I can actually spend my time preparing meals for them and my husband also helps so yeah we both take over the cooking and we also have a maid which cooks for us as well from time to time if we do want to have Indian food but she does know not to put any chili in there whatsoever just the regular spices and a bit of salt because that's how we used to eating our food but in general my taste buds are in heaven I love vegetarian cuisine and this is the majority of the food that I am eating here is vegetarian and for the last month I've been following vegetarian diet like exclusively so I don't eat meat at all and I'm feeling fantastic I feel like my energy level is still high up and I've actually managed to lose some weight so if you are curious to find out how I've dropped 5 kg you can check my previous video and I will share this in a card above so you can check it out if you like and this was just primarily based on Indian diet. Now, you might have also seen in my previous blogs that we have managed finally to get a car. This was something that was very challenging for us to move about here in India because not having a car means that we have to commute by Uber or Ola. And this can be a nightmare alone because booking Uber and Ola, although it is usually available, it's not always available. Sometimes there are cancellations, sometimes there are waiting times. And the drivers also drive quite fallen apart cars, which sometimes you just don't know whether you're actually going to make that journey that you're trying to make. But rickshaws are very convenient and affordable ways of moving about. So every day when I go to the gym and I had nowhere to drop, no one to drop me, I used to just jump into rickshaw and for like 50 pence, which is less than a pound, I was able to commute 10 minutes distance. But now we have a car and life has changed for my husband. Not for me so much because if my husband's not available, I still need to get Uber. It is what it is. However, I am trying to convince my husband to maybe get into the 
idea of buying a car for me as well. While I'm taking the seat covers off, uh, Josh, can I drive the car for the first time today? Why don't you let me drive in India? The reason is that she's not allowed to drive in India is because of uh, her driving skills. I think they are a bit too... I'm an excellent driver, excuse me, 15 years, no one single ticket, no accidents. What are you talking about? Right. Driving in India, you don't need to have perfect driving license, zero points is very different. So the fact is she might be a good driver, the people around her might not be so good. So having an accident can cause a serious problem. So I don't think there's no Indian blood in her. So you will not be able to survive on the roads here. I don't need anything new or large. I just need a small city runner runner so I can just get from A to B myself without relying on my husband all the time. But it will take some convincing, so I reckon for another few months, it's not gonna happen. Making connection in India is super easy. And I don't know whether that's down to me being a foreigner here in India, or whether it's because people are just very friendly and open. I get so much attention everywhere I go. People wanna take pictures with me. I quite often have to politely refuse because I'm not gonna be taking pictures with some strange man. So any man that's watching this video, if you ever see me, please don't approach me for picture because how would you feel if your wife goes and has picture with strangers? I think it's quite reasonable for me to refuse it. And, but if it's a family with children, I quite often just agree to taking a picture. It's quite a nice gesture, I think. And, you know, I am looking different to most of the people here in indoor, especially in indoor, there's very little foreigners. So I am kind of standing out of the crowd. But I love how people are very polite. They are always smiling. They're willing to talk to you. They have time to talk to you because people just generally have more time than anywhere else. They're usually not in a rush. This is probably why they're getting late everywhere because there is a very fashionable trend to get late everywhere. So if we're running late somewhere and there is a party for five o'clock, it is expected for people to turn up at six or 6.30 or even seven o'clock. It's totally acceptable and no one ever gets mad for people getting late, which is something that drives me mad because I'm a very punctual person coming from European background. We always turn on time. So this is what I'm trying to continue doing, but sometimes, you know, I'm trying to or I'm starting to get into that habit of not always being on time not trying to be under the pressure of being somewhere on time because I know that I'm going to be the first person there probably before even the house is there so that's why I'm no longer rushing to get places on time I'm just allowing that additional five 10, 15 or even half an hour time to get somewhere because I know that I'm gonna be the first person there. But I did notice when it comes to like a professional meetings, this is still a there too. And if someone says five o'clock, it will be five o'clock. So it's not always the case that people are late. I wanna talk a little bit about kids because obviously I did mention that for them, the life has changed massively. And especially my daughter is not quite yet adjusted to the lifestyle here. She has so far in one year sat four sets of exams and she's only just managed to complete her finals. And it was very challenging for her. She studies a lot. She's a very ambitious girl and she wants to do well. But some subjects are a bit harder to what she's used to. Also, some subjects she didn't actually have in the UK that she has now. So for her, there was a lot of studies, a lot of hours spent studying, sometimes even late till night, she was still here studying, even though I was already fast asleep because she knows it's important for her to do well on those exams and those marks in class nine already go against her final marks for getting to the university. So she feels under a lot of pressure. And my boys are also studying hard. They have tuitions because for example, they have Hindi, which they never had before, so it's a new language for them, and we want them to actually learn the language because that's where they live. Angie's learning French, for example. She does not have to take Hindi anymore, but she does find, for example, that people do tend to speak in Hindi with amongst each other. So because of that, she cannot quite blend in always into the conversation. It is what it is. We are in India and I think we should adjust and learn the language rather than people adjust to us and speak the language that we speak, even though they can. But the good thing about being here is that the education or the tutoring outside the school is much more affordable to what it was in England. And both of my boys are taking music lessons, for example. They have it for about five to six times in a week, each have half an hour. Arjun plays guitar and Jay plays piano.
had we been in England, it would have been impossible for us to pay for two children's lessons half an hour every day or five times a week. It would be just very, very expensive. So we are happy that we can actually put them through that extra education because music is something that is within them. We know that they are talented and they have that passion for it. And this is something that we're both are very, very happy that they're doing and we're seeing the progress and again it makes us very proud boys are also playing football so this is something that they've been going for the last half year and they've had also very good progress on that especially we see that jay is really keen playing football and he's got a bit more of a talent to it than our arjun from class five arjun will be going into swimming lessons because perhaps he's just not get up to do football so we have found our ways around shopping. I love the availability of Big Basket and Swiggy. These are two applications that I use on a daily basis. If I'm missing something in the fridge, I literally order it and in 10, maximum 15 minutes, the order is at my door. So I don't have to even come out or think twice. Even if it's a very small order worth three, four pounds, the goods will be delivered without extra charge. And this is fantastic. To me, this is just like so much of a freeing of my time. Not always everything is available. That's why sometimes I look for bas big baskets. Sometimes I look for Swiggy and then I can just fulfill the orders in a very, very quick way. So you might be wondering, what am I doing in my spare time here in India that we've now moved here? I had to quit my job of a CA. I'm a chartered accountant by profession and I was doing a financial controller role back in the UK, earning quite a good money, I must say, comparing to what I could achieve for the same role here in India. So since I've quit my job, I'm actually jobless right now, but it is by choice. I would not like to jump back into CA and my passion is doing YouTube, which is what I wanted to grow here in India. And I must say, I am really overwhelmed by the response of you guys. I've gained so many more subscribers and subscribers is not what matters the most. To me, it's important that I'm getting more engagement. I'm getting more of you to comment on my videos and enjoying them. There are some haters like maybe do not appreciate me being in India. I don't know what it is down to, but some people are a bit more vocal about they disliking towards me. I appreciate much more those comments that are kind, polite and lovely. And I am really overwhelmed by the lovely response that I get from all of you. So thank you so much for letting my channel grow. It has flourished from 10,000 subscribers that I've had when I first entered India. I am now at over 35,000 subscribers. So this is fantastic growth and I could not have been more grateful to you all for watching my videos because if it wasn't for you watching them, I wouldn't be sitting now talking to you about our life here in India. I am also involved for the last two months in organizing a beauty pageant. So here in India, there is many beauty pageants, but the one that I'm taking part in and organizing where I'm going to be judge and also I'm coaching, I'm coaching the confidence, the image consulting. So the one that we are organizing, the difference between others is that our winners will go international. So we will be sending ladies, miss and misses because there is two categories in that. We will be sending them abroad to Canada and Korea. So they have a big opportunity to actually go somewhere after the pageant is finished. So this is what I've been doing lately. I've been creating a lot of creatives for the pageant. So if you guys wanted to check it out and see a little bit more about that, I invite you to have a look at my Instagram page because this is where I post daily stories and you will see my involvement in a pageant. Another thing that I've been recently involved in was public speaking. So I've had opportunity to speak at the DC College uh, Business Management Center. And there was a conference, international conference, where I've been invited to talk about a topic which I was really, really happy to research and put together a presentation. And it was so well received on my channel that I was actually overwhelmed by the amount of people who congratulated me. The comments really, really mean to me a lot. I read every single one of them and I try to respond to every single one of them. I hope you see that. I've also been on the radio. So one of the local community radio here from the IPS, which is one of the academy here in India, have got their local radio and they invited me over to to talk about my YouTube journey and the advice that I could give to YouTubers. So I will also link this video in the description below because if you guys are thinking of starting YouTube channel and don't know where to start and how to start, how to monetize it and how much money you can make on it, please do go ahead and watch this video because I am sharing all the knowledge that I have without any hidden agendas, everything on the plate for you guys because I really wanted to make this very, very helpful and useful 
podcast to everyone that will be listening to this. I also go to a lot of like mom groups. So there's few mom groups here in Indoor, which were always very, very happy to invite me over. I met so many beautiful, inspirational, gorgeous women that run their own businesses, that are entrepreneurs, and all of them, they just want to meet up with one another, collaborate, and this is what I did already with few ladies here. So it's amazing to be able to actually do that, that networking here and connections is amazing here. Again, it could be down to me being foreigner. I don't know that. Some people told me on my channel that I'm being exploited. I don't believe that because I don't feel like I'm being exploited. So, so far as my feelings are not hurt and I'm not being taken advantage of in a way that I'm wasting a lot of time but not getting much in return, I'm getting so much in return because for me, meeting people, socializing, this is all down in my heart and I enjoy doing that. So as long as I'm having fun and spending my time with people around me that are positive and vibing on the same level, I'm okay with that. So don't worry guys, I can handle myself, I'm a big girl. And so far, this has been an amazing journey for me. I also go to the gym on a daily basis. So I try to stick to five to six times a week routine. I go to a local studio where me and my friend go together as accountability buddies and we work out. So I enjoy breaking the sweat, even though I'm breaking the sweat, even though I'm not working out, it's so hot. So the weather I also enjoy, but sometimes it gets a little bit too hot. I can't put the fan on because then you guys are gonna hear a lot of background noise, but it gets hot. So we all have ACs, we all have fans, and they will be working the minute I finish this video for sure. So this is from my perspective. Now I wanted to ask my husband a few questions for you guys to kind of understand what he's feeling about India, because him being Indian, he might have a little bit different perspective on what's happening in his day-to-day -day life. So, Javi, take it over. So, this is Josh. Josh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Well, I'm an Indian boy from Punjab. Uh, moved at the age of 13 to United Kingdom. Um, studied there somewhat and had a family and work and decided to move back to India. Where they say it's a pull, you know, the mother's calling. So, can you tell us a little bit more about what do you really like in India so far? Well, India is my home. So, I like being here, I like spending time here and that's the reason I have moved to India and I think it's the fastest growing economy. I love the food, I love the culture, I love uh, the hospitality and most year round I love the weather. So there's quite a few factors obviously and the education, kids have great education here as well. So these are a few things that I like. There are many more things you know I, do, I like about this country but these are the main things. And how about the dislikes? Are there any particular things that you really like? cannot jump over and feel like you're getting really annoyed with. Indian, I think I'm allowed to be honest and some people will like it and some people will not like it, most people will not like it. Okay. Indians are very patriotic, you know, and which is a good thing and sometimes it's not so much a good thing. Things I don't like here is corruption. I'm going to go straight to the point, not going to waste much time. So there's corruption, um, there is um, disorganizing, disorganized departments, um, these are the main things I don't like. Now, I came to India to invest, to actually settle here, to make my life, to start a business, to give jobs to local and contribute into the economy. Now, I'm sure there are many people like me moving from other Western countries back home, and that's what I hear on the news. But India or the government hasn't made it easy for foreigners like us, you know, NRIs, to come back here. It has been absolute nightmare from the day one, trying to get the Aadhaar card, the PAN card, um, the driving license, you know, it's been nightmare. So it took me 11 months. You can buy the car. Yeah, so 11 months now it took me to get Aadhaar card. And it was like back and forth to Aadhaar card center, in the queue, sitting in there, photos not correct, signs not correct, colors not correct, bring your dad's documents. They just make it so difficult because everyone's asking for money. They will tell you if you want your Aadhaar card much faster, easier, it will, you pay 4,000 to this person, you pay 5,000 to that person, you have to pay money to them. I've been called to a collector's office. Uh, once my Aadhaar card was near the end of the stage to for a verification. Three times I visited collector's office, almost three months they had my documents on their table for verification. I just don't, they just never sent it, send the verification to Delhi. I had to, in the end, get a solicitor and, and say, look, you know, you have to sign the solicitor letter. I will take this legal action against you guys if you don't process my application. There was even time when I said to them, enough is enough, cancel my application. I do not wish to have a Aadhaar card and I was planning to move back to UK. I was so frustrated. Luckily, after 11 months, my Aadhaar card has arrived. Difficulties we had, 
not having a dhaka means cannot do any business here or trade, cannot buy any apartment or property, cannot have a car. Uh, if I, so you can't do much here. And at the same time, the schools mean after me, you know, but ka Aadhaar card, you know, aap kab laoge? when would you bring the kids Aadhaar card? So yeah, that's been quite hectic. So it has been a hard journey so far. So got my Aadhaar card. I had about four or five business plans that I wanted to um, start up. And each business idea somewhere down the line has been kind of ruined or, or didn't work out. And main issue is officials. Uh, and, and then corruption. So I wanted to go on something, you can't do that because there's it's a turf or there is competition or there are gangs involved and, and many people I've met and they just say, look, it's not safe, I, you know, this, to do this, this business here, you have to do this elsewhere. There isn't confidence uh, for foreigners to invest in India unless you're a big company, you know, you're setting up, you're moving your business here, outsourcing, you know, where you employ locals, that's different because you're actually having a foreign business here, you can always move it anywhere else. So I personally think that India can be more welcoming for NRIs at least. Um, so encourage NRIs to come to India, it's a fast growing economy. Now as you know, it's a fourth largest economy and another two years or even sooner, uh, it is too said to be the third largest economy. So therefore we have to act like the third largest economy, you know. At least have a department for NRIs where their documents are processed, where they're given the guidance and help they need to set up themselves in India. Encourage. Well, yeah, that's, that's right. So something makes it easier for them. So, you know, it's sort of thing, yeah, okay, we can come here. A lot of people thinking it's too much of a headache to kind of come here and they just doesn't bother. Many people I've spoken living in Canada or, or, or you know, part of other, other, other part of Europe and they all say that it is a nightmare, you know, it is a mess. And disorganized, you know, this is not a good impression that we are putting, you know, out there. Being third largest economy, fourth, sorry, being fourth largest economy, we can have better roads, better knowledge for the drivers, you know, sort of training. We can have clean environment. You know, there's a lot of things we can improve on, you know. So as you guys see in her vlog about our new car, now it hasn't been one month since, um, uh, since we got the car and it's already been damaged. So uh, our scooter drivers brushed past it, scraped the bumper. Um, and you know, what I notice here, the driving is madness. There is no lane discipline. There is no roundabouts using correctly. There is no one stopping at the traffic lights. Some stopping, some not stop, stopping. 180 seconds of traffic light being oh, lost. It's, it's, it's crazy. The driving here is absolutely dangerous, I think. I mean, especially for the two wheelers. Not two wheelers, they drive so dangerously. But they carry small babies, you know, ba they, those babies cannot make decisions about their safety, about putting a helmet. So this is parents, you know, if you want to die, put the helmet or put the safety on the baby, you know, or the children. And I think government need to kind of be strict on it. This is not right because the, ultimately everyone here, all those young babies or children or guys, and the taxpayers, they're contributing to the economy. So it should be government's responsibility to take care of them or to make sure that they keep on paying taxes so their health is good. Now just one more question. Since I've explained what I'm doing here in India so far, can you just quickly tell us what are you doing on a daily basis? So mopping, washing dishes and cleaning. <laughs> Guys, don't fall for it. He does sometimes. So other than actually house chores, I do sleeping, watching movie, Netflix. No, I'm joking. So, yeah. Okay. So I, I at the moment, as 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 I said to you guys, I at the moment looking for a business opportunity or to invest into a business, uh, not a phony business, not a phony investment. So I'm really, really cautious. I have some FDs here where I have moved a majority of my funds from UK to India, and I put in FDs as you guys know. Or you don't know in India we get 7.25 percent on fixed deposits where in the UK you like you get about four percent profits uh, I have health insurance for myself uh, which also covers my family and I guess it so hopefully then I can set up a business here and remain here I want to stay here I want to be in India the rest of my life and travel the world from here spend my money here give job to people here build up something here you know get my children to be part of this country so I think we still have some time, it's a make or break one more year.
Last time when I was doing the video for the sixth month anniversary that we were here, my husband actually sat down with me and we did the video together. But this time I really wanted to give you the insight from my own perspective without my husband's input. So I can be totally honest with you because sometimes the conversation gets diverted to another topic by another person. So I really wanted to give you my own perspective on the stay in India so far. And honestly, I don't have any horror stories. I don't have any bad experiences to share with you other than people getting on my nerves by not getting somewhere on time which I'm getting used to there isn't really anything that I wanted to say negative about this country and I love being here to be honest I've been here for a year and if I could I probably would stay all my life because I don't mind not working full-time being accountant and not pursuing my career because I love doing YouTube I love traveling I love having free time to sometimes even watch Netflix or meditate and by the way I wanted to mention that I have become much more spiritual here ever since I'm in India I've been practicing much more yoga than I ever used to before and also I have started meditation I've been reading into the universe studies so I've become bit more spiritual than I've ever been before because I have time I have time to connect deeper with myself I have time to discover my passions and my inner self really because I don't work full-time and I am not so terribly busy that I used to be back in the UK so my life has changed for much better being here in India and I don't want to go back to be honest <laughs> My parents will probably not be very happy listening to this because they are missing us incredibly. And although we speak to each other on a daily basis, it is very difficult to be so far away from one another. And it's a very long trip, actually. It takes three flights, two connections to get here to indoor to see us. So therefore, we went to see them in December and we don't yet have plans as to when we're going to see each other next. And this is what my children are very upset about, as well as my parents, that we just do not get as much chance and as much harder to see one another but it is what it is sometimes you got to sacrifice in life for the better future of tomorrow right so this is it this is all i wanted to share with you guys i hope you enjoyed this video please do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it and comment below what did you think of my experiences so far here and if you have any advice for me that you would like me to take on board while i'm here in india please don't forget to put that in the comments below and i thank you so much for watching and i see you soon. Bye.